All right, we are live. <laughs> Here we are live on Friday for our Bible study, and I see that uh, it's already raining in Florida. Well, Sister Dolores, y'all got rain in Florida. We got wind in California. I think I'd rather have the the rain over the wind. Anyways, so it's good to be here on Friday Bible study. Waiting for everybody to get logged on. We're here five minutes early. So if you're watching this and we've already taught it and it's already gone on, you can fast forward five minutes and catch us a prayer. However, if you're here live, you kind of have to go through the long way, the long process with us. And uh, so go grab something to drink, grab somebody to watch this with, and uh, we'll have a Bible study here in just a few moments. Good to see Brother Steve on there greeting me personally. Thank you. And uh, and uh, so, yeah, we're getting, getting time for everybody to get on. Uh, Sister Z is getting her phone out. She's getting logged on. Uh, Sister Dolores is reaching out to you personally. I just want you to know that as you're getting logged on. All right. So tonight, I am hoping that tonight is going to be a little bit interesting. Uh, we have a few questions that came in uh, during the week, and I wanted to address them tonight because I thought that they were pretty interesting, and probably more than one person has these questions. And so tonight, we're going to be dealing with some stuff. And if you want, go ahead and call me. If you have a question, you want me to handle it live. Uh, text me, email me, whatever. Um, we'll we'll throw all that information out there in just a moment. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have a good time tonight. You know, I, I don't have to work tomorrow, so uh, we could take all night long and just teach like a 10-hour long marathon Bible study. What do you think about that? Wouldn't that be amazing? We have two viewers, but three of us on. I've got five. This is two. I know, see? But there's three on chat. On chat. So there I, has to be more. I think so, yeah. But folks are getting on there. All right. And uh, so like I was saying, we've got some uh, questions that I'm going to be dealing with. And then if you have a burning question that you want answered tonight, if I have the answer, I will do my best to answer that question. Uh, and if you're, if you're not watching this live and it's already been pre-recorded well send me an email uh drop me a line let me know and we'll handle we'll handle any questions that come through if there's an answer to be had we'll find the answer if we can't find the answer we'll find somebody who can amen so we'll be get we'll be getting going here in about a minute or so giving everybody a chance to get on uh dolores is inviting us over to rainy florida <laughs> Pick up right now. Hooking up the pickup right now. Hooking up the pickup. Hook up pickup. There we go. That does not sound good. No, we wow. I cannot believe I just did that live. It's okay. It's only us. I yeah. That. Yeah. So a, okay. We would hook up the pickup. Hook up the pickup. Yep. Anyway. I'm looking for anyway. <laughs> Not sure how we're going to get into the word of the Lord after that one. All right. Uh, mercy. We do have a few prayer requests that we're going to be bringing before you. Some of them are new. Some of them are ongoing. Uh, some we don't have answers for yet. Others we do have answers. So uh, we do have some praise reports as well. Giving everybody just another moment here. <coughs> Amen. All right, so here is an update. We have an update on Bob. We've been praying for him uh, and his eye, and apparently it is beginning to heal, which we were super excited about that. So there's healing taking place, and we're trusting and praying for uh, for a continued good report. We, we really want God to be magnified by this in this man's life. Uh, there is a man named Don. He has redness and a lump on his leg, and he needs healing. This is somebody that we're acquainted with, uh, and I would love to see God do a miraculous work here and, and open a door for us to begin to witness and share the word of the Lord uh, with Don. Please pray for our son, Dustin, and his wife, Missy. Uh, they are going through some personal things. 
that I am not going to throw out there, but they also need the Lord to draw them into uh, salvation. Amen. So please pray for Dustin and Missy. Val and Jesse, please continue to pray for them. We're getting good reports out of the thing that they've been uh, wrestling with. So keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. And then continued prayers for Jill and her family. Amen. So many needs, and yet our God is bigger than all of those things. So uh, let's go to the Lord together now. Jesus, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord, because you are the prayer answering God. You are the one that hears and answers all of our prayers, that there is nothing that happens without your absolute knowledge of it. And Lord God in heaven, we bring our needs to you, knowing that you are in control, trusting you, believing you, God. And God, we're asking you for your help in this Bible study. Lead us and guide us. Uh, give us direction by your word. Be magnified, be glorified. We love you. We adore you. We exalt you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise God. All righty. So I am really excited to kind of dig into this one tonight. Uh, very interesting questions that have come my way. Now, before I get into that very quickly, uh, please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when we go live or we throw anything up there. Give us a thumbs up. I do see those, those happening. Give us a comment. Leave a, a chat. Uh, or if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, uh, my information is in the chat window. Uh, it's also all over my channel, my phone number, my email. Please let me know, and we'll do our best to get you Bible answers. So I got a text earlier this week, and it starts out this way. Good morning. Pray your day started well. Does scripture allude to anything about aliens and dinosaurs? I recall hearing someone speak on this once at an assembly of God. I was a kid, so I don't remember if they were saying it's in the Bible or not. Now, I'm going to stop there because this is a multi-part question that, that I'm going to be dealing with. Uh, but right now, let's deal with the aliens and dinosaurs. Has anybody else, I'm really curious, has anybody else out there ever wondered about aliens and dinosaurs? Give me a thumbs up. Yes, no. My wife says dinosaurs. She has wondered about dinosaurs. Uh, <clears throat> so it, it's, it's actually something that comes up in conversation when people are attempting to prove or disprove the veracity of the scripture. Okay, Dolores has never been concerned about dinosaurs and aliens. Or is that a no to something else? There's a conversation going on. Never mind. No, no is to that. Oh, no is to that. Okay. So <laughs> that's the problem with doing it like that. Huh? So uh, I, the problem with, with, with these topics in conversation with somebody is you will have a dogmatic uh, opinion. Uh, no dinosaur or alien. Okay. Uh, well, Sister Dolores, I'm going to answer your, your, your unasked questions. <laughs> but whenever somebody brings up aliens and dinosaurs, they're trying to either prove or disprove the scripture. Uh, and, and so that is not my goal here tonight. And, and so I want you to hear my answers to these questions as clearly as I can give them. Let's deal with dinosaurs. Genesis chapter number one, verses 20 through 31. So we're going to read Genesis chapter one, verses 20 through 31. We read out of the King James Version Bible. And believe it or not, we're actually going to go back to Genesis chapter one to answer the aliens question, too. I hope I've got somebody interested. OK, so Genesis chapter. You're interested. OK, so Genesis chapter one, verses 20 through 31. And I have no idea what's happening here. 
So the Bible says, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Do you know what day this is without looking in the Bible? Do you know what day this is? You're looking at the Bible. I was not looking. You were glancing at it. You were cheating with it. Okay. It is day number six. More happened in day number six than just creation of man. Okay. I'm, more than just Adam and Eve happened on the sixth day. Let's take a look. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the, and the morning were the fifth day. Now watch this. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing." and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Now, wait a minute. Didn't the fifth day just end? So what day is this? This is the sixth day. And God said, okay. And God said, let the earth, okay. And verse 25, and God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. And every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now. The reason I included day number five is because of the whales. And whales are very similar to the dinosaurs. So it's possible that the dinosaurs were created in either day number five or day number six. But the way day number six, it reads that now man has dominion over everything that the sea created and over everything that the earth created. And so it does seem to allude that whatever was created in day five was also in existence in day six. So I don't have a problem with the existence of dinosaurs. I really don't. Um, we, we, we get so much from the dinosaurs. We get the fossil fuels, fossil fuels. We get these things. Uh, we've, we've found bones. We have seen the, the archeological digs and, and everything. And so now we're very confident that there were, uh, large mammals that existed, on the earth now i see this is where I, I really disagree with christians because i don't have a problem with dinosaurs look look at the komodo dragon 
the Komodo dragon looks prehistoric. Look at the alligator, the crocodile. Uh, there are things that we're still finding in the oceans that look like, oh, oh, that that's like should be from billions of years ago. And yet they're still in existence today. So I don't have a problem with God creating dinosaurs. He all, I mean, God knowing the beginning and the end and the end from the beginning and everything in between, he also knew that fossil fuels were going to be needed. And so the dinosaurs were a part of all this. Now, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sinned, death became a part of this planet's, planet's existence. It appears from the scripture that up until the disobedience of Adam and Eve and their and their and their original sin, death was not a part of the existence on this planet. Look at Romans 5:12. Romans 5:12. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So it appears like there was no death until they disobeyed. Evolution wants us to believe the dinosaurs had to die off before man came about. The Bible lets us know that, or it alludes to, we all pretty much cohabitated. It was not a meteor that killed the dinosaurs. It was man and his sin. Well, what about the oil and the fossils that show millions of years of being around? That's easily answered. When those dinosaurs were killed and they went back to the ground and the flood and all that water, and I don't have the math in front of me, but it's eight, eight I think, 0.3 pounds per gallon, and then you compress it one gallon on top of another big so then it begins to square itself then then it gets wonky in the math and how heavy and compression it can get so you have enough water that covers mount everest compressing on all this death that has happened on the planet and that accelerates the process of fossilizing and receiving these fuels god had it all planned he didn't need millions and billions of years to do it all he needed was one good flood so there's an answer to all these concerns from the Bible. I don't have a problem with dinosaurs. I believe they existed, but I don't believe they existed billions of years ago. And I do believe that man and dinosaurs possibly cohabitated at some point. That's my personal belief. And I think you see where I gain that. Now, will I say the Bible definitively says no? Notice I say the Bible alludes to, and now I have formed my opinion based on that. Am I making sense? Okay, Brother good. Jim says a sturgeon looks prehistoric. A sturgeon does look prehistoric. What about a what about a uh, what about a piranha? I had one piranha eat another piranha. I had they were my pets. I had one pet eat another pet. <laughs> so that's my that's my answer and my biblical approach to, to the dinosaurs. I, I try to keep it as balanced as I possibly can. Uh, that is the best answer I think we're going to come up with as people of faith. Now, what about aliens? This one I had so much fun with. And and uh, my 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 quick response to the person that sent me that, that question, uh, I answered the dinosaur question pretty quick. Uh, but I asked, I actually kind of answered a little incorrectly because I mentioned Behemoth uh, from Job. And Behemoth is actually a water ox. I, just it was a big old I know, that's what everybody thinks. It's a, it's a, it's a water ox. Isn't that, isn't that big old it's an Egyptian water ox. They're still in existence today. So, <clears throat> what about aliens? We, <laughs> I know, right? The things you learn at Bible study. We are going to operate under the auspice of an alien being from space and another planet. Because technically, yes, angels and devils would be aliens because they are not of this world. We're not going to, but they're spiritual and supernatural in nature. 
what the big question out there is, are we alone? Is there another civilization? Can we boldly go where no one has gone before? <laughs> you know, these are the questions that we ask. I, I need my Spock cup. I do. Uh, and by the way, it was never said in any of the original series, Star Trek, beam me up, Scotty. That phrase was never, ever uttered in any of the original series. Yes. Okay. So we are going to operate under the auspice of an alien being from space and another planet. Okay. The Bible does not say whether there are extraterrestrial life forms from another planet in this vast expanse of the universe or not. I will openly admit that the Bible is silent regarding this. Here is what we do know from the Bible. God created all things, including us. Man disobeyed God and is now sinful in nature and separated from God. God himself put on flesh and walked among us. God allowed that flesh to suffer, bleed, and die for our sins. God resurrected that flesh out of the borrowed tomb and, and proved that he is the resurrection and life. It is God we need to focus on. It is God we need to be searching for, not aliens. It is God we should be trying to communicate with, not E.T. Now, that is what we know from the Bible. Space and science spends hundreds of millions of dollars to search the heavens for life. And all we have to do is pray to search for true life. Before delving into the Bible for this answer, let's ask ourselves some common sense questions, please. <clears throat> if primitive man was so, I don't know what, let's say primitive, then why would super advanced aliens be interested in us? Oh, did they want to assist us in our development? Well, if so, then I think eating Tide Pods is not an improvement over primitive man. Did they want to usher in peaceful cohabitation? If so, they failed miserably. Is our technology any better than ancient man? Well, the ancient Egyptians built the Great Pyramids and we have no ability to duplicate it. There are many things of ancient man that confuse and confound our experts today. Nobody can explain how, techno how technologically advanced ancient man was. Watch this. Ancient man erected structures aligned with the stars, moved things that we have nothing powerful enough to even budge, put things in places no one can figure out how, and so on and so on and so on. Are we really technologically more advanced The Great Pyramids is a prime example. Uh, in Malta, there, there's uh, another structure that dates older than the Great Pyramids, and they have no idea how, why, who, or what. And there are other structures. Uh, there's a city, I can't remember where it is, uh, but it was called uh, the city where gods were made. Uh, and yet it was, it was, and, and nobody can explain anything. Do we really think that technologically we are more advanced because we have silicon, silicone chips or, uh, or, 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 uh, 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 computers and quantum, quantum computing and it, uh, artificial intelligence and, and all this, do we really think that we're super hyper advanced? Really? We think we're so hyper advanced because we have figured out artificial intelligence, but yet we can't figure out how to stop somebody from committing suicide. We can't truly map out the psyche of somebody who has a soul. Oh, we can go ahead and map out some electrical components and say now it has thought and it can have self-awareness, but it doesn't have a soul. 
technologically, we're not advanced more than ancient men. Ancient men would laugh at what we've what we think we've accomplished. We we have we have oh forms of communication which is so much better. Yet we're more out of touch with each other than ever before. Yeah, our cars are smarter than ever before, and people are dying more frequently on the roads than ever before. I mean, come on. I don't think our technology is any more advanced. I just think it's different. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Final common sense question for tonight regarding extraterrestrials and us. What makes us think we are even remotely interesting to any civilization advanced enough to master interstellar navigation? Consider the following. In order to travel fast enough through space to get anywhere in one single lifetime without cryogenics or things like this, you need to travel faster than the speed of light. That is 186,000 miles per second. Now, consider, dear, dear ones, if a grain of sand hits something at that speed, it would release 5,600 times more energy than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. If a grain of sand hit the earth at the speed of light, it would go right through it punch a hole right through planet earth now a spaceship traveling at or faster than the speed of light would need power to create shielding to protect against any space debris micro dust or anything that might hit you while you're traveling at or faster than the speed of light so you would need something shielding you that was denser than planet Earth. Okay. Not to mention the power requirements to move you at or faster than the speed of light. And that requires me to explain something about E equals MC squared and the theory of relativity. And I'm, I don't have time for that, okay? So if there were a civilization that could accomplish that alone it would be so not interested in us. Now, what does the Bible say? Genesis 1.27 says this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. If there are any other civilizations out there in the cosmos, the best they can be is as good as us. Oh, that's narcissistic, isn't it? God created us in his image. There is nothing greater than God. And so we must be the pinnacle, the apex of his creation. Which means if there is anything else out there, the best it can do is match us. Well, wrap your brain around that. What does it mean to be created in the image of God? Is the image the same as attributes? It is. But there is one attribute that we're going to be dealing with more specifically than any other tonight. And that is God's passion. God does nothing without a foundation of passion. Passion is an intense, powerful emotion. Now, passion speaks of ardent love, amore. Our anniversary was yesterday. I, I, oh, her birthday was yesterday. Anniversary was day before. It denotes a boundless, a limitless 
a teth an untethered enthusiasm. No boundaries to capture or hold prisoner in enthusiasm for something or someone. Passion is probably one of the greatest motivating forces, if not the greatest motivating force in the universe. So you say, I have That is correct. People know that Watch this. I've made reference to this in the past. It was passion to reach the moon that caused J.F. Kennedy to give a rousing speech that included X like this. I believe that nation, that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive than mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. The expense could not match the passion the that was spam <laughs> the 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 passion was greater than the difficulty the passion was greater than the shock of the moment uh the passion the difficulties were no comparison to the passion the enthusiasm to reach the moon first literally became boundless this nation for nine years knew no financial limitation knew no national boundaries knew no no limitations on what they could achieve it was during those nine years that the united states of america truly became the nation of the technological advancements. This is where it happened for us. Because of one man's burning passion to do something nobody else had ever done before and to go someplace nobody else had ever been. There was nothing and nobody that could stop, block, or hinder the progress of the fledgling space movement. The nation was in a cold war with the Soviet Union. We had just suffered the fiasco of the Bay of Pigs with Cuba, and the Vietnam conflict was on the horizon now. Yet, in the midst of all this opposition, this, this push against the passion and vision of one man to reach the moon first united the fractured morally and financially struggling nation, this passion gave America power to achieve its goal. Passion. Where did that passion come from? Oh, it's a product of evolution. It's a, it's a, it's a thing of chaos coming together and creating. A, no, no, you cannot explain passion with the theories of evolution. The only way you're going to explain passion is to point me to a passionate God who is so passionate that he is compelled to create something out of absolutely nothing but his only spoken word. The first recorded account of God's passion was for creation. And I, we would go back to Genesis chapter one again, and read the entire thing, if it weren't so incredibly lengthy. And, I'm, and I would fear boring you, uh, those of you that get bored with the reading of the scripture, those of you that are enticed by the reading of the scripture, go back and read it and read it with a fresh vision uh, of God's passion. Reach. Sorry, Genesis one. Can you tell how many times I've read from this from this chapter? This is the first page of my Bible. This is it. I do. Genesis chapter one in the be and beginning at verse one in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Up to this point, there was nothing but 
God. What was there before there was God? There was nothing before there was God. God had to create time before there was the concept of a before or after. I know I'm getting really wonky. I'm getting out there. I understand. We have a hard time comprehending these concepts because we live in such a linear fashion. But this is how it began. We have to understand God's driving passion. It drove him. His passion was so strong, so powerful that it reached into the wellspring of power that had never been tapped before to do something that had never been done before and that was to create life outside himself well i just rocked my whole trailer <laughs> wow his passion caused sons to burst into existence planets and asteroids to be flung across the expanse of the universe and galaxies to begin to rotate and life to begin. That's the passion of God. God did not create man for the express purpose of worshiping him. He has the angels for that. It is so foolish for us to think that God needs our worship and praise. Oh, he deserves it, but he doesn't need it. The angels don't need the saints of God praying for them to become more powerful to overcome the forces of evil. God is all power. He does not need us to acquiesce to him. God does not need our obedience. God does not need our worship. God does not need our praise. God does not need our daily existence to be so focused on him. He doesn't need that. God needs nothing from you and he needs nothing from me. We are nothing to God. When you compare us to him, we are a speck less than what, we live a hundred years, maybe? He's eternal. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, we create electronics? <laughs> God created life. To, to think that God would deign himself to even pay attention to one moment of my, pray time, my prayer time is mind-boggling in and of itself. This is the kind of God we serve. And his passion caused him to bring all this into existence. God did not create man for the express purpose of worshiping him. He's got, he's got the universe to do that. He's got the angels to do that. He's, he's got demons. The demons worship him. God's boundless enthusiasm for creation provoked a surge of unstoppable power to perform this act of creation. Go to Second Chronicles, please. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. I'm going to tell you why you're created. I know they do. I'm going to tell you why you were created. I'm going to tell you why biblically you Second why you were created. Second Chronicles 16, 9. This is why you were created. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Why? To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. That word perfect means complete or full. It doesn't mean that you live a life of absolute perfection. It means that your heart is complete. It is full toward him and now you're striving for that perfection but as long as my heart remains full toward again completely toward him not devoted to anything else but him okay then I got a chance at this now that requires something of us right passion we are created in the image of God. God gave us his passion. 
we are the only being that I know in existence that can match God passion for passion. How do I know this? Man is driven to create fusion energy like the sun. We are being driven to create our own sun now. We are being driven to create life. There is a passion within humanity to push the boundaries and to see what else we can create and to see what else we can do and to see what else we can invent. God put that in us. Don't don't punish your children when they explore the boundaries that are before them. Teach them how to explore them safely. (laughs) Amen. That's a God-given drive, that passion to push against something that's holding us back. I want to see what's on the other side because that passion, that passion, that passion, passion, we are the all, this is why, okay, I have five cats in this 38-foot trailer and they all coexist and survive because that's all they know. They don't have a drive for more. God created mankind to match him passion for passion. But we, okay, because the Bible says, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. So yes, thank you, Sister Ziriak. It matters where we put those passions. That's where we either get into trouble or we are okay with God. Our, is our hearts comp- is our heart complete or and full toward Him? Is our passion one hundred percent towards Him, or is it divided otherwise? See, God's passion was one hundred percent towards us. That's what drove Him and motivated Him to put on the body. That that, that that that's what drove him and compelled him to allow that body to be nailed to the tree. It was that passion to reunite us with him. Do we have that same driving passion within us? Yes. But what are we driving it towards? And so with all this, I must say, if there is an alien civilization culture out there. Then as good as it's going to get is what you see in front of yourself. Because God created us in his image and that passion is driving, 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 driving. For good or bad, it starts wars and it starts families. You know, nations were born and killed by passion. Yeah, things have been done well by passion. Things have been done evilly. Is that a word? By passion. So use your passion wisely. And direct it towards the Lord. And then the aliens and the dinosaurs, they won't matter as much. Because when it all comes down to it at the end of the day, it is all about God and God alone. Can I have an amen? Amen. All right. Praise God. And it's only 739. Yes. So we have passion which drives us towards the Lord. So... Passion towards the Lord also help us to be compassionate towards others that we want to direct towards the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Sister Dolores. So that passion that we have towards God will also drive us. That's a, a, a soul winning, witnessing, talking to people, trying to get people right with God, always remembering that we are walking with with God. We're ambassadors of the kingdom, lights to the world, all those things, 
all of that must be driven by a passion to be right with God. Now here's, okay, here it is. Here's where pastors, preachers, and churches, and people fail. It begins so innocently with the right passion. And God responds to it. As God responds to it, others see it. If that passion does not remain focused and driven towards God and God alone, then we assume part of that glory. Then we get a little wonky in false doctrine. And then we go really bad. So as we pursue, and this is the side of witnessing and seeing God do things that we don't talk about. As we see God do these things, we have to be prepared in our heart to let that passion not be diverted towards lusting that other stuff, but let it always be driven towards God. If our passion to be right with God overrides our lust for everything else, we'll be okay. But you and I have seen it enough in Pentecost where that passion becomes a lust for power. For power and fame and 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 spiritual pride. authority and pride and everything else that goes with that and that's where people go sideways so the passion i'm talking about will produce results in the kingdom of god but it has to be a pure passion purely driven for a desire for the things of god anything else is a distraction that is the only way we're going to make it in these last days. I, I'm really glad you brought this up because, because I want to see God do things. And I want to see everybody out there start sharing the links and get people involved in Bible studies and get them involved with me. And, and let's, 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 let's get people right with God. I, I'm, I don't care about building a church. I don't care about building a following or massing anything like that. I just want to see people right with God all over the world, right? So that's what's important. Now that sounds pure in its in it in its root, and that's where it has to remain. And if it does, God will begin to do the things that we want to see him do. As he does this, our, our passion must remain pure and not get sidetracked by all this other stuff. The yeah, the trappings. So there it is. Hope that answers those questions. Oh, praise God. We got into something pretty heavy, didn't we? Now, that was good, Sister Z. Thank you for your input. Any any other questions up to this point, please? Uh, text, email, uh, chat, comment, because I've got something else to move on to. There's more in this text that had, had more questions. Anything else? Going once. I'm watching her screen so I know where we're at. Going twice. Okay. <laughs> so no. <laughs> All right. So uh, the next part of the question or next part of the text was also, if nothing is new under the sun, is that referring to only people? And the functions of the world. If not, then that would mean all the technology was around way back when. Heard this sermon to mean all things are old. Okay. On on the surface, I have to I have to take that 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 statement slash question slash query, and say. Solomon in his, thank you, Sister Dolores, for putting the information out there. Um, uh, Solomon in his infinite wisdom, remember, he was the wisest man that ever lived. Uh, not the smartest, but he was the wisest. Uh, that's another story. He, uh, <laughs> he, he, he wrote these words or said these words, and there is no new thing under the sun. Now, before we go into answering this question, let's look at it in context, okay? No new thing. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse, let's just go to Ecclesiastes 1. We're going to begin at verse number 1, and we're going to read on through to verse 11. All righty, all righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. So beginning verse number one, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. That's how we know it was Solomon. Pretty self-explanatory. Vanity of vanities, say it the preacher, vanity of vanities. All. Now this is not the vanity that you may be thinking of. This is not the vanity that says, oh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? No, that's not the kind of vanity that Solomon is talking about. Uh, this vanity is a Hebrew word that means empty, uh, useless. Yeah, just no substance there whatsoever. Uh, picture, if you will, a wide mesh net trying to hold water. That's just vanity, right? Okay. Uh, verse number three. What profit hath a man of all his labor which he, which he taketh under the sun? Well, one generation, one generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continuously, and the wind returneth again according to his circuit. All the rivers run to the sea, yet the sea is not full. Under the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. <laughs> All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It have been already of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now, I have a simple explanation for this. I went back and started looking at some videos on YouTube from the 60s, the 70s, the 40s, technology from the 30s, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I am amazed at how much things have not changed over the years. Uh, oh, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. They've changed. Things get faster, smaller, whatever. But concepts, you know, what's, what Solomon was saying is here, here, look. You are going to live and die. This generation is going to live and die. Everything the past generation accomplished is forgotten about. And everything this generation is accomplishing will be forgotten about. Because really all we're doing is doing the same thing over and over again, just in a different different way. And when you're dead, the earth is going to remain. When your children are dead, the earth is going to remain. And when your children's children are dead, the rivers are still going to flow. Rain is still going to come. Oh, no, climate change, all this, all that, blah, blah. Okay, then there's going to be a mass extinction, is, extinction event, and man will go down to a little handful, and the earth will replenish itself, and we'll do it all over again. If that's what it means, that's what it means. Yes. I would, when I would read this before, it always seemed like he was a little down. And I yes. Thought, okay, so he was the wisest man. So if you read 18, it kind of explains where his whole... So let's go on, okay? The whole thought is, is kind of summed up in 18. It kind of explains his, 
Mindset. His mindset. So let's go on then. Thank you. I saw you going ahead. I was hoping you'd do that. Verse number 12. I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. In other words, you know, God just put it within us to kind of like push the envelope. I have the passion. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed with mine own heart saying, lo, I am come to great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge Increase the sorrow. The more I was driven to do the bad things, the more I knew and the more I understood and the wiser I became. And it just, it, it came at a price. Yeah, it's a vexation of spirit. And you know what I think he was saying here? If I had to do it all over again, I think I'd do it different. <laughs> I think I'd be asking for the heads of my enemies. God, you can keep your wisdom. <laughs> I don't know. Look, that's just my jokey take on it. Um, but when you look at life, you know, man is so foolish. We're like, oh, look what I just invented. Really? That concept has been around for a long time. You just invent a different way of doing it. Did you know that computers have been around since the day of creation? God is the original computer. <laughs> Everything is put together by simple mathematics. You cannot escape math at all. Everything is designed by math. Math explains everything. And math will point you back towards God because the exact science of math that never makes a mistake, math does not make a mistake, not that I've been able to find. Uh, other sciences do make mistakes, but math is so specific that, uh, wow, it will always point you back to God because being that specific, you got to have something to put it in place. It didn't just happen out of chaos. Praise God. All right, so anyways, I hope that's right. So surely life continues. And what I've learned in my 56 years um, is that there's really nothing new yet. Not really. I heard it explained this way. We were driven within nine years to get a man to the moon, right? To go the furthest distance we've ever been. To get a man to the moon. Wow. Next thing we did. We thought we really accomplished something by putting a man in orbit. In a space capsule. You know, a space station. Now, you know, we think it's we've even gone better. Because we can get a man up there and back in the same day. Are we really progressing or are we digressing? The Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. When you look at all the accomplishments and the advancements that man has put in place, all it has done is set a greater stage for the Antichrist to take over, to take away your freedoms, to take away your lifestyle, to take away your ability to live for God. Everything that we've accomplished as mankind up to this point has only set the stage for our ruination. Yeah, the more we...
create more stuff, the more we're limited in what we can do. Are we really doing better, people? That's why our passion needs to be for the Lord. There you go. Well, I hope I answered the questions. I hope that was satisfactory. I hope that was fun for you because it was a blast for me. Uh, I guess we'll find out who's on on Sunday. <laughs> nope, it didn't answer it. Uh oh. Is that what she said? It didn't answer it? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do not like the delay on the chat. <laughs> oh, listen, we love y'all so very much. <laughs> We're going to pray right now. God in heaven. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you for your word that helps us to understand life as we live it. That, Lord God, regardless of all that's happening around us, it can your word can help bring our focus back. That We need to focus on you. We need to live for you. We need to walk with you. We need to serve you. Uh, we need to pray to you. We need to reach out to you, communicate with you. It's all about you. Lord God, I'm asking you to bless your people, strengthen your people, encourage your people, God. Have your way all this weekend. Be exalted. Be magnified. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. We love y'all. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll see y'all Sunday. We miss y'all so much. Amen. Hope you had fun because I did. Hallelujah. Don't put nope up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh.